hello everyone this is dr mihir shah once again with another video in this video we are going to learn how to solve sums using sharpes trenors and jensen's method under the chapter portfolio performance measurement now we'll be taking a very important sum which will cover up all the three types of measurement this is a very important topic for all the ty bms student for their semester 5 so see that you all learn this topic very well so let us see how to solve the sum based on portfolio performance measurement under sharpes trenors and jensen's measure okay now under the chapter portfolio performance measurement the sum that usually come is based on calculating the performance using sharpes trenors and jensen's measure So now let us see how to solve the sum. Now this is always a compulsory question which usually appears in the paper. So let us see how to solve uh, the particular sum having all the three types of measure. Now in the exam they can be asked any one or any two or even all three can come in that. Okay. So let us see in one sum how to solve all the three measures. Now we'll read out the question one. It's given that for following are the details of three portfolios. So we have portfolio one, two, or three. then we have the market index they are given as the average returns they are given as the standard deviations and beta the risk free rate of return is 8% you are required to compare these portfolio on the performance using sharpes trenors and jensen's measure and then you have to comment on which one has outperformed the others so now let us see one by one okay how to solve the sum we will have to first start with so we what we'll do here is we'll start number 1 first solving using sharpes measure so under sharpes measure okay we will first note down the formula and thereafter we can you know apply or we can substitute the value on it and get the final answers for different portfolios so first we note down the formula so i write here that sharp is ratio or measure is equal to r that is average return minus rf that is risk free return upon standard deviation okay very simple formula average return that is r minus rf risk free return upon standard deviation now for all the values okay for all the three portfolios that we have average return is given yes standard deviation is given yes and the risk free rate of return is also given so very simply we just have to apply it into the formula so now for portfolio 1 okay for portfolio 1 when you use the sharpes formula it will be r minus rf so that will be 13 that is average return minus 8 risk free return divided by the standard deviation that is 0.25 okay so 13 minus 8 divided by 0.25 now this is the standard deviation okay so while calculating it the answer that you should get is the value that we get is 20 okay so that's the measurement Uh, the performance measurement using sharpes ratio for portfolio 1 similarly we will see for portfolio 2 it will be average return which is 12 minus 8 divided by now again the standard deviation is 0.25 so 0 divided by 0.25 the value will get is 16 and for third portfolio it would be 11 minus 8 divided by 0.20 which comes to 15 now based on that performance okay now we have to give a comment which one has outperformed all so as per the you know sharpes measure i can say that portfolio 
one has outperformed okay that's our comment on our sharp is measure okay very simple sum to solve okay now let us see the second method it's known as the trainers measure so we'll just note down the heading this is based on trainers measure again first we'll note down the formula so trainers ratio is equal to it is similar just one change it will be average return r minus risk free return that is rf upon beta okay so in sharp it is standard deviation under trainers it is beta so now let us apply these values for each of uh, the portfolios so number one for the first portfolio it will be average return that was again 13 minus 8 divided by the beta that is 1.25 so when you minus and divide you will get the answer as 4 now same way for the second one so the second portfolio it would be 12 minus 8 divided by 0 0.75 okay after minusing and uh, dividing the value you should get would be approximately 5.33 and the third one it would be 11 minus 8 divided by 1 so 11 minus 8 would be 3 divided by 1 would give you 3 so now based on trainers ratio okay based on trainers ratio if we need to say which one has outperformed we can clearly see that portfolio 2 the value is the highest has outperformed the remaining so as per trainer we can say that portfolio 2 has outperformed Okay, again a very simple procedure to solve the sum. Now comes the third one. Now this is the most important. Okay, Jensen little uh, is the one of the most important because it is, it has to be solved in two different steps. So we'll first note down the heading. Third, this is based on okay Jensen's measure. Okay, now in order to solve Jensen's uh, measure, okay, the sum gets divided in two parts. So, first step number one, we need to first find the expected return. Now, expected return ka formula is the formula that we usually use for CAPM method. Okay, that is rf risk free return plus beta into market return that is rm minus risk free return okay so this is one formula which has to be learned very carefully okay risk free return plus beta into rm minus rf that is market return and your risk free return so first we have to calculate under step one the expected return of all the portfolios so first we'll do for portfolio one the risk free return was eight which is fixed for all plus beta that is 1.25 for portfolio one into the market return okay so the average return ka market is 11 percent so we'll take it as 11 minus risk free return which was again 8 so it would be 8 plus 1.25 into 11 minus 8 which would be 3 so you multiply you add the value that you should have got for your portfolio one would have been 11.75 percent similarly we need to find for portfolio two so for portfolio 2 the formula may again we go as per the formula so risk free would have been again 8 percent the beta for the second portfolio is 0 
again market return and risk free would have been the same when you solve it the value that you all should have got would have been 10.25 percent same we go for portfolio 3 now portfolio 3 ke liye again start would have been same 8 plus the beta value for third is 1 11 minus 8 so the value that you all should have got would have been 11 percent Okay, that's step number one. So first we need to get the expected return for all the three portfolios. Now we jump to the second step. The second step states that. So I'll write here step two. We need to find, we'll now note down the actual Jensen's formula. So we write here as Jensen's. differential measure it's called as Jensen differential measure the formula is actual return minus the expected return actual is the average return which is already given and expected which you have already found so for again for each of them so for portfolio one the actual return was 13% and the expected is 11.75 so when you subtract it okay for those I'll note it on this is for portfolio 1 so 13 minus 11.75 would give you 1.25% same way for portfolio 2 It would have been 12 minus 10.25 which would again it should give me 1.75 percent and for portfolio 3 it would have been 11 minus 1 which would give me no 11 minus 11 which would give me a 0 percent. So now based on Jensen's uh, measure, the highest return which I can see is in portfolio 2. So I can, you know, based on the, the, I, you know, the, ex, the measurement, I can say that portfolio 2 has outperformed. With this, the Jensen measure also comes to an end. So this is the sum which has to be solved when they ask you to you know, find the performance using Sharpe's measure, Trainor's measure and Jensen's measure. So remember Jensen has two parts, others they have direct formula and you just need to substitute the value. Okay, Chalo. I hope everyone have understood this, a very important sum from the exam point of view under the chapter Portfolio Performance Measurement. I hope everyone has understood. With that, we will end this video here. Stay tuned for other videos. Okay, very interesting and important topic relating to exams will be there.